energy for life, power, capacity, and progress. Promptitude is valuable possession. It begets reliability. People who are alert, prompt, and punctual are relied upon. They can be trusted to do their duty, and to do it vigorously and well. Masters who are prompt are a tonic to their employees, and a whip to those who are inclined to shirk. They are a means of wholesome discipline to those who would not otherwise discipline themselves. Thus while aiding their own usefulness and success, they contribute to the usefulness and success of others. The perfunctory worker, who is ever procrastinating and is always behind time, becomes a nuisance, if not to himself, to others, and his services come to be regarded as of little economic value. Deliberation and dispatch, handmaids of promptitude, are valuable aids in the achievement of prosperity. In ordinary business channels, alacrity is a saving power, and promptness spells profit. It is doubtful whether a confirmed procrastinator ever succeeded in business. I have not yet met one such, though I have known many who have failed. Vigilance is the guard of all the faculties and powers of the mind. It is the detective that prevents the entrance of any violent and destructive element. It is the close companion and protector of all success, liberty, and wisdom. Without this watchful attitude of mind, a man is a fool, and there is no prosperity for a fool. The fool allows his mind to be ransacked and robbed of its gravity, serenity, and judgment by mean thoughts and violent passions as they come along to molest him. He is ever on his guard, but leaves open the doors of his mind to every nefarious intruder. He is so weak and unsteady as to be swept off his balance by every gust of impulse that overtakes him. He is an example to others of what they should not be. He is always a failure, for the fool is an offense to all men, and there is no society that can receive him with respect. As wisdom is the acme of strength, so folly is the other extreme of weakness. The lack of vigilance is shown in thoughtlessness and in general looseness in the common details of life. Thoughtlessness is built another name for folly. It lies at the root of a great deal of failure and misery. No one who aims at any kind of usefulness and prosperity, for usefulness in the body politic and prosperity to oneself cannot be served can afford to be asleep with regard to his actions and the effect of those actions on others and reactively on himself. He must, at the outset of his career, wake up to a sense of his personal responsibility. He must know that wherever he is, in the home, the counting house, the pulpit, the store, in the schoolroom or behind the counter, in company or alone, at work or at play, his conduct will materially affect his career for good or bad, for there is a subtle influence in behavior which leaves its impression on every man, woman, and child that it touches, and that impress is the determining factor in the attitude of persons toward one another. It is for that reason that the cultivation of good manners plays such an important part in all coherent society. If you carry about with you a disturbing or disagreeable mental defect, it needs not to be named and known to work its poison upon your affairs. Its corrosive influence will eat into all of your efforts and disfigure your happiness and prosperity, as powerful acid eats into and disfigures the finest steel. On the other hand, if you carry about an assuring and harmonious mental excellence, those about you will understand it and be influenced by it. They will be drawn towards you in good will, often without knowing why, and that good quality will be the most powerful sport in all your affairs, bringing you friends and opportunities, and greatly aiding in the success of all your enterprises. It will even right your minor incapacities, covering a multitude of faults. Thus we receive at the hands of the world according to the measure of our giving, 
for bad, bad, for good, good, for defective conduct, indifferent influence, and imperfect success, for superior conduct, lasting power, and consummate achievement. We act and the world responds. When the foolish man fails, he blames others and sees no error in himself. But the wise man watches and corrects himself, and so is assured of success. The man whose mind is vigilant and alert has thereby a valuable equipment in the achievement of his aims. And if he be fully alive and wide, awake on all occasions, to all opportunities, and against all marring defects of character, what event, what circumstance, what enemy shall overtake him and find him unprepared? What shall prevent him from achieving the legitimate end at which he aims? Industry brings cheerfulness and plenty. Vigorously industrious people are the happiest members of the community. They are not always the richest, if by riches is meant a superfluity of money, but they are always the most light-hearted and joyful, and the most satisfied with what they do have, and therefore are richer, if by richer we mean more abundantly blessed. Active people have no time for moping and brooding, or for dwelling selfishly upon their ailments and troubles. Things most used are kept the brightest, and people most employed best retain their brightness and buoyancy of spirit. Things unused tarnish quickest, and the time-killer is attacked with ennui and morbid fancies. To talk of having to kill time is almost like a confession of imbecility. For who, in the short life at his disposal, and in a world so flooded with resources of knowledge, with sound heads and good hearts, can fill up every moment of every day usefully and happily? And if they refer to time at all, it is to the effect that it is all too short to enable them to do what they would like to do. Industry, too, promoted health and well-being. The active man goes to bed tired every night. His rest is sound and sweet, and he wakes up early in the morning, fresh and strong, for another day's delightful toil. His appetite and digestion are good. He has an excellent sauce and recreation, and a good tonic in toil. What companionship can such a man have with moping and melancholy? Such morbid spirits hang around those who do little and dine excessively. People who make themselves useful to the community receive back from the community their full share of health, happiness, and prosperity. They brighten the daily task and keep the world moving. They are the gold of the nation and the salt of the earth. Earnestness, said a great teacher, is the path of immortality. They who are in earnest do not die. They who are not in earnest are as if dead already. Earnestness is the dedication of the entire mind to its task. We live only in what we do. Earnest people are dissatisfied with anything short of the highest excellence in whatever they do, and they always reach that excellence. There are so many that are careless and half-hearted, so satisfied with a poor performance, that the earnest ones shine apart, as it were, in their excellence. There are always plenty of vacancies in the ranks of usefulness and service for earnest people. There never was and never will be a deeply earnest man or woman who did not fill successfully some suitable sphere. Such people are scrupulous, conscientious, and painstaking, and cannot rest in ease until the very best is done, and the whole world is always on the lookout to reward the best. It stands ready to pay the full price, whether in fame, money, friends, influence, happiness, scope, or life, for that which is of surpassing excellence, whether it be in things material, intellectual, or spiritual. Whatever you are, whether shopkeeper or saintly teacher, you can safely give the very best to the world without any doubt or misgiving. If the indelible impress of your earnestness be on your goods in the one case, or on your words in the other, 
your business will flourish, or your precepts will live. Earnest people make rapid progress, both in their work and their character. It is thus that they live, and do not die, for stagnation only is death, and where there is incessant progress and ever-ascending excellence, stagnation and health are swallowed up in activity and life. Thus is the making and masonry of the first pillar explained. He who builds it well and sets it firm and straight will have a powerful and enduring support in the business of his life.